an another yet another talk about static keys, but now it's extended. <laughs> so um, the previous versions of like static keys implementations were not super generic, and they were not merged because of this. And Alexei proposed how to re-implement them in a better way, such that uh, the implementa implementation can also be used uh, to provide other features than uh, static keys. And uh, I, I will try to go like step by step so that everything is simple and uh, everybody understands what's happening. So let's start from the like API for static keys. It uh, more or less mirrors the API for static keys for Linux kernel. And basically here we have uh, a static branch which uses static key named debug key. And uh, the feature is that uh, if the static key is enabled, then this check uh, costs us nothing. It's just a knob. And when it's enabled, then we jump to this uh, unlikely branch. So in assembler, it's uh, knob if it's disabled, and it's jump if it is enabled. So I, I will list here like a list of steps how to implement static keys, like theoretically, and then I will show some pictures so all, all these items are clear. So um, in order to uh, verify uh, this new feature, uh, we need to introduce a new instruction. Actually, two, but it doesn't matter that much. Uh, so that uh, verifier can distinguish it from just absolute jump, like J. Uh, because verifier needs to verify like both branches when we go, like nope, when we go jumping. Uh, and then um, uh, such static key may be used not once in program, but multiple times. So we need to, to have some mechanism to join a set of these instructions into one set. And then, uh, uh, of course, we need a mechanism to patch these instructions in the running program. So it's either syscall and or kfunc, which takes this set of instructions as a parameter and just sets it on and off. And uh, like typical BPF, BPF way to uh, pr provide some object to manipulate is a map. So we will introduce a new type of map for this. Um, but uh, about later about map, uh, let's look at pictures so it's like clear how it looks like. Um, so here we have a BPF program. Uh, it, we have a static key. Static key uses it twice in this program. One, uh, like it's not super logical here, but one time it used like in likely branch and one in unlikely, just to illustrate that we uh, did them to different operations. So basically, uh, this uh, static key or like instruction set or whatever is just a list of uh, indexes inside program. So when the program is loaded and verified, uh, it happens that uh, instructions change their addresses because we insert instructions, we delete instructions, uh, and then uh, map the indexes inside map also have to be adjusted to point to the same correct instructions. And finally, when we JIT the program, uh, we need to record the indexes and some little bit more information of uh, uh, actual native code inside the same map. And then we can manip manipulate it. So if we have this program, which is loaded already, we have this static key, which is initialized. Then we can execute the syscall. Uh, with map file descriptor as a parameter and parameter on off or like more flex if needed. Uh, and then like go to or knob will be translated to jump and knob or go to will be translated to knob. And when we disable, uh, it's translated back to knob either or jump. So a little bit more details about this instruction set. So what is its lifetime and how it operates. So before we load the program, we need to create this map. We need to insert instruction pointers inside this map using like syscall map update. And then uh, when we load the program, 
this map is bound to program because it's like one one to one relationship and it becomes also read only for user space so that users can't alter it anymore and BPF side like normally can't access uh, can't alter the map at all so it's always read only from BPF side um, then yeah the, and then map is relocated during verification and uh, populated with more information during the JIT stage. And uh, one thing here is that we need this map during verification, uh, but the, it, it's organized such that the program do not reference it directly. So there is no instructions inside the program which point to this map. So verifier normally will not be able to, to understand that we are using it and relocate and bound, bind it to program. So we need uh, a way to pass this map file descriptor during the program load and attributes and then the, the verifier is okay. Uh, and we proposed first to use uh, FD array, which exists already in the program load attributes. And I agreed, so yeah, we can just add FD array counter, but then when I started implementing this, I found that this array is actually sparse, so we actually can't go through it. So in the middle can be any trash, which can like, pretend to be a file descriptor. So what I propose to do here is to add like two new fields, like bind of the array and bind of the array counter. And this will be just an, an array of like currently map file descriptors, but maybe uh, later any file descriptors. And uh, yeah. It can go even like without the static keys because it's kind of optimization for existing PPF proc bind map syscall. Um, so it's absolutely the same functionality. We just put it into use it maps array, uh, but um, it's done in one system call. Is there any are there any concerns about adding like such two fields? No concerns, awesome. So yeah, to summarize what uh, like BPF static key API will look like and what's required to implement it, it's two new instructions, um, uh, go to or nope, or nope or go to. So uh, in my patch I have like um, flags, like source reg register XL to one or two for this, for BPF GA, but I saw uh, Alexei added uh, gcont instruction, so maybe it will be extension to this gcont instruction instead. Um, but it doesn't matter that too much, probably. And then um, this new map uh, should be implemented. The, these two fields have to be added to the prog load, and then uh, really a simple syscall edit to manipulate it, and maybe later kfunk if there are use cases. So, are there any questions about static keys? Uh, <laughs> just, sorry, just a very quick aside that uh, kfunks I think would be useful for SCEDEX because if we want to try to mirror what uh, EVDF or these other schedulers do, they all use static keys a ton, so this would be pretty useful for us as well. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would have to use it with kfunks. Yeah, well, one thing is that um, this uh, uh, syscall takes a mutex which protects the this architecture poke. So yeah, not, not every BPF program will be able to call it. All right, yeah, I um, <laughs> guess we'll have to see. Uh, this uh, syscall map of DEP uh, implying that all entries in that uh, set map will be flipped. Yeah. That's an idea. So yeah, I think that's enough for your use case, but uh, I'm just thinking whether it needs to be a bit more like selective in terms of like specifying which entry. And I don't know whether it's necessary, just like... Uh, can, can you can elaborate? What, what's entry? Like the set will contain <clears throat> all elements that sort of use this all uh, pointers within different programs that use no, no, this No, 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 it's, it's per program. Oh, this is per yeah, program? Yeah, it's per program. 
if you like uh, instruction pointers do not make sense to like two different programs so it's only per program if needed like if you want to use like the same static key like as like object for different programs to patch them at the same time it's like another like mm -hmm. and two different let's say <coughs> you have two different static keys within the same programs that will, those will be two different uh, yeah maps, those are two, right? two different maps map entities yeah. okay so one map effectively it's one well, one, map one one static key using kernel terminology yeah exactly okay yeah that might be okay but uh, why uh, separate question why uh, how come that uh, RAFD was sparse like what happened there I, RFD was never copied to kernel, so how it's used it is that instruction has uh, index inside this FD array, and when we resolve this index, it just uh, copies from user one map uh, file descriptor or one BP BTF file descriptor. So, yeah. So you, this is in general case, or this is light skeleton? This is just like a normal libpf behavior? Where we use uh, this? Th this is what libpf does, for example, when it generates this like loader bpf program. Or so this is light skeleton? Is yeah, it? yeah, it is used. Yeah. So it, it first allocates some number of these file descriptors, but when, when, if it's full, then it starts populate like later in data sparse like pieces of these file descriptors. Oh, now I remember, yeah, because everything is a file descriptor, like both like rocks and maps and links, whatever, then mm -hmm. if it is just... Yeah, I think it contains only like maps and BDFs, but yeah. Yeah, yeah whether this sparse stuff, well, it's currently sparse is not an issue, it's just like two extra fields when it can be just one. <laughs> That again? No, 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 it's not in Shalizer. It. It's uh, how libpf does it this is that it just uh, puts like it's in the beginning of data and then there is like other normal data and then it can add another pieces of this uh, FD array just mixed with other data. So like you, you never know like what, what's in between. So so first like this this is used only for light skeleton right now, right? This FDRI stuff, it's only used for like when we use light skeleton. Yeah, I think so. Normally, no. BBF doesn't do that. No. I mean, uh, maybe no, there are it's, other it's users. It's also used for the uh, like, uh, KFUNC and modules. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and we don't like zero initialize this uh, array. No, no, no. Okay. And uh, in, like, in between elements of this array, there is just other variables from the data section. It's not that it's like initialize it to zero. It's just like BPF site, like kernel site, never copies this array in full in kernel. It just copies. Yeah, I understand that. But users, I'm saying user space still provides it as zero initialized right now. I think no. no. Like I understand that kernel doesn't assume that. I'm saying in practice it is zero initialized. So maybe we should just fix this. I'm yeah. I'm not sure, but. It doesn't help to add this counter because you can't copy like from first element to the last because in between there could be any other data, and it like any number can be like theoretically. I'm saying like, practice script, no. Right? Like it. Well, we'll need to check the code, but I think it okay, will be yeah, zeros yeah. in. I mean, if, if it's fixable, then it's awesome, right? <laughs> but I think it's not. And this, this new map that you're adding, this is one map per static key you're saying? Yeah, it's one map per static key, and then uh, I will show like other use case late, like next slide. So, so it's one, one map per static key, and the key and value of that map are, are what? Like one of them is like the, well, the, the instruction pointer. Yeah, uh, key, key value is just an index and like index so it's like an array. array yeah. kind of it's here. just like array, but it contains like more like data actually. It, uh, I'm not sure if I understand that correctly. Yeah, the purpose of this is uh, to enable or disable a, a branch uh, during verifying. Right? Yeah, uh, not uh, it's runtime. It's not. It's runtime, not yeah. verify. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the 
the map is required to verif like to verify and to point to correct instructions. Okay, so every time they run in the instruction, will check uh, the value and uh, decide the branch. Right. Every time verifier encounters this go to or an open instruction, mm -hmm. it uh, validates uh, not just jump to the offset, but also jump to plus zero. Yeah, so that is what I mean is uh, that that's a uh, very big check uh, during uh, running the verification, right? Uh, can you repeat this? Yeah, I mean that if uh, the, the flag is, uh, for example, on is false, then the verifier find that instruction then will disable that uh, branch, right? Yeah, I mean, but by default it will be false. So verifier, when it jits, uh, like load or when it jits after the ver verification will generate like the default, like nop or jump. For example, depending on like go to or nop or nop or go to. Yeah. And then run time mm -hmm. already when like verifier is already released and gone. Uh, we can execute the static key, and this will patch only the jitted code. Okay, so it's patch the call uh, before the program is actually run, right? Or during the run, the program is run. During run time, run like time. It's li life. Yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, initially it's a feature to enable debugging and like tracing into BPF programs which run on hotpots. So, you, so can, it's like you can you can you can switch on on off. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Right, that's, that's. What why does the why does the fact that it's um, a static key need to be encoded in the instruction? Uh, can can you repeat what? what? Why do we need a special instruction type? Uh, because uh, verifier needs to verify both edges. Like nor normal uh, BPFJ, we only like unconditionally jump to like plus offset. Yeah, but here we need to take like when we build the like depth first graph of program, when we execute it later, we need to take both branches. Yeah, so but isn't the fact that it's a static key already encoded in the map that the verifier already has access to before the load happens? Mm -hmm. yeah. The value of the map can, but the fact, the fact that an instruction is a static, uh, it depends on a static key. That's like just the fact that it's re referenced in the map, right? Yeah, but yeah. then uh, it, it, it is possible to derive this information from the map itself. But then, uh, if you like disassemble program, you will not be able to understand like wh yeah, what it it's be, doing normally. Like for kernel, it is working. Maybe there are some debuggers. Maybe there are some like outside tools which uh, also try to understand what's happening. And but is it? Is there lots of space in the instructions that um, encoding? Is it? I seem to remember. Like I I've looked into this a few years ago, and I seem to remember that the opcode space was quite tight. But is that not true anymore? Has it been expanded somehow? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. How did? It? Um, but uh, why do you need two instructions and not just one and then um, See my previous talk. It's for likely and unlikely cases. Uh, it's the way how you organize this. Uh, the default. Hmm? The, the default, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so if you want unlikely, you need to like reverse the, the, the section and do jump instead of knob, so by default, so yeah. <coughs> Um, so going back to FDRA, I just checked. LibPF always zero initializes this. I think we can just fix. Yeah, this. but but I don't see why it matters. Like, imagine if you, had the count, uh, right? you, you take a count, you take just... data, right? First part of this data is this array. Then you put like ten variables, which are not related to anything here, just variables. And then you put another file descriptor. And then you want to walk this array. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, we don't do that. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, we have an array, right? Like, of FDs. Mm -hmm. And we pass it as a parameter to, to the system. No, I mean, it's, it's not an array. It's just base address. And then uh, from BPF program, you have index plus this base address. So it, it jumps over other elements in data. Are you talking this like from, from the standpoint of kernel code that's written right now? Yeah. And I'm saying that, OK, but conceptually, it's No, no, no. The, the libpf creates um, programs which have piece of this array here, piece of this array there. 
What? Yes. <laughs> we'll need to look into this. I, I have no idea what it is. Okay, let, let's think after the okay. talk. Huh? <laughs> okay. Um, I, had, I had a question as, as well. Uh, it's, this is cool. It makes my job a lot harder. So our, our hypervisor actually has a try that checks static key updates and ensures that the right value being written is either a NOF or the jump, jump target. Uh, and part of that initialization process is looking into the traditional kernel static key map array. Um, so my question is kind of like, what was the use case that motivated moving the map, uh, or at least creating the BPF map for these keys rather than using the existing kernel infrastructure for for static key management? Yeah, I mean, uh, static key and kernel, they're really static. So they only apply to code which was built once. Stat and it's like they are declared statically in C code. I guess. And it's for, like, yeah. I see. So you ran into problems with the runtime. Because I was thinking of just adding to the data structure, the existing data structure in the static key management API. Is that part of the kernel code? Instead of having maybe exposing this map to the file system and all this. Yeah, but this is not patching the kernel code. This is patching BPF code. I see. I, that's, that's, OK, maybe my question isn't clear. Um, there was already existing kernel infrastructure for managing static keys, for managing the instruction offsets of static keys mm -hmm. and patching those static keys. Yeah, so how, so how the kernel, yeah, how yeah. kernel side is implemented is uh, as how we implemented for like one BPF, one instance of BPF program, right? Kernel has uh, like one, one pro like address space and all the static keys are really static. They point to exact address in the kernel address space and like all the functions just go over this array and part, patch I, this particular instructions. I see. And this is the same, but like pair BPF program. Okay, yeah, thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, um, the, the original like uh, feedback from Alexei was to generalize the implementation of static keys uh, and introduce this like instruction set map so that we can implement other features on top. So basically like introducing this map and relocating it during verification time lets us to have a, like a new type which is pointer to instruction and this for example lets us to implement uh, like giant time builds in direct go to uh, and uh, how it's supposed to work is that we have now like new instruction. We will have the new instruction go to register, and uh, this register has to be loaded uh, from the map of type instruction set, and then this instruction as well, uh, instruction itself, has to reference the same map. So during verification, it's not like BPFJ. It's BPFJ, which can jump like to every entry in this map, and uh, during runtime, runtime it's like zero cost afterwards. So, um, is this going to run into problems with the verifier trying to take too many branches? Because I know one of the previous talks um, mentioned that. We need jump tables because if you have like a big switch case, it'll become too many branches in the mm -hmm. verifier. But I, I would assume this would cause just as many branches. So um, when, when you have this large switch case in the verifier, I think the, the problem there is that it's like if else, if else, if else, if else, and it can be like 200 if else's. But here, like we would just like jump there and then it ends, jump there and then it ends. So it's, uh, it's more, smaller chunks to verify, as I believe. Okay. I'm not sure that it's uh, less complex for a verifier to actually verify this, and like you probably can find both use cases when it's like the same or, or more uh, complex or yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm, yeah, and again, like the, the use cases is like first, which I can imagine, and which was which should be simpler to implement is uh, switch. So when we have like switch voila to different cases, for you, for we, we can take all these cases, create like integer indexes for them, put them into map, and then this switch go to in the top uh, just uses this like the, 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 the same thing. So on the right here, like i and j will be cases for switch. And then um, 
Mm. Oh yeah, I skipped one slide, sorry. So yeah. Um, so this map should be somehow referenced from the instruction because we need to like to, to do like both checks. We need to to check every jump when we build the graph of the program, and then we need to validate that register contains pointer two like loaded from the same map, which was used to verify this instruction runtime. And so far, I just. Uh, come out with uh, like putting file descriptor in the immediate field so on load we have reference to this map and we can use it for verification and later we, we can just keep it like anywhere um, and uh, unlike static key example where like we can just forbid programs to access this map from programs uh, here we need to load values and we need to introduce some new uh, type uh, for uh, B BPF register because it, it has to be read only because otherwise uh, program can obtain a pointer to map and just uh, alter it. Mm. Or maybe there, there should be some, I don't know, maybe this instruction should be like specific and just take pointer to map and offset inside this map, like an offset field, and then do all this, uh, uh, just load value from map and then BPF programs don't have to access the map anyhow, like with normal functions. So yeah, um, examples uh, is switches. Next example, which I can imagine like which I can imagine we can translate like automatically from LLVM through like the BPF to the uh, to the BPF is just like if we have an array of uh, label addresses and then we use like go to array then probably we can like automate it by creating a map for array and uh, emitting like go to R1 when where R1 was loaded from the map. So, but I'm I'm not sure how how complex it is and if it's like. So before we go, you yeah. go to the next slide. Just like a quick comment from the LLVM point of view, the switch statement is already like represented in IR. Pretty much what uh, we are trying to build here, it's a go to instruction and the set of targets is already specified as part of like LLVM IR. So mm -hmm. at that point, and this is done before like we lower it in the backend to like anything. So it, is, it will be easy, well, easy-ish enough in the VPF backend to take it, like create a map for all of the targets that it knows and like emit go to. Mm -hmm. So, so it shouldn't yeah. be hard. For, for this kind of stuff, when it is the address of the instruction, this, this double ampersand stuff, not sure. Yeah, how, I mean, like, um, you, this, this one is easy if you only have one go, like one table of these things per program then you can just put them into like default jump table then use yeah, like I, if I, you if you have two such like yeah, I just two such go to how, and it's how like LVM does this particular case so switch actually maps nicely mm -hmm. uh, but this can we somehow like add uh, uh, some like i don't know btf tag to data to to say which map it corresponds to. So annotate this array and annotate this go to and then match. Maybe. <laughs> I, I think CBT. BTF now do not pass any BTF tags for data, only for functions. So you can have tags for data. Mm -hmm. It's just like there was no use case, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, if, if we have switch, it's probably you know, like enough for me as a like initial use case. And like one one like one generic thing per per program as well. So or hopefully. <laughs> no, feel feels all feels all right. So like everything so far looks <coughs> that it like fits and how hard it is for LVM. Shouldn't be too hard for GCC, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. So any more questions? 
sorry, not, not sure if I, I caught this earlier, but um, so let's say you had like two conditional checks, like, like your example, right? Like one, two. Uh, so this is actually going back to the, to, um, just the general um, static keys, right? So, so like, say like at the start of your program, you have one of these static key checks, and then you have a whole bunch of logic, and then right at the end, you have one. So in terms of like atomicity of the, of the changing, like if you've got a BPF program that's currently running through that, and it's halfway through the two static, check, uh, static keys checks. Yeah, they and then are somebody independent. Like, they can, one can be on and another can be off in the same run. I, I can understand why, but I can also understand how that kind of might Yeah, be. I mean, for, for like if you use it for debugging, it doesn't matter that much, right? Right. If you use it for enabling disabling features, you probably can be careful like to, um, to design a code such that it's, it doesn't affect you too much. Like it's Yeah, you could probably extract that away with another <laughs> key or something that's like, oh, the, the transition has occurred or something like that, right? Like, yeah. you know, it's probably solvable. How will this, like the static keys, how will it look like in C code? In C code? Like this. And then how do you do it, like how do you use this from user space? This is the user space, no? Uh, I mean user oh, space, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Here, syscall, static key update, map, map file descriptor, and like on off. Yeah, I'm trying to tie this all together, right? So like on the BPF side, you have this macro. What does it do? How do you get this map FD to user? You know, like how do you find all those parameters that you need to pass to syscall? How will this tie together? Yeah, I mean, uh, map is uh, listed in the used maps from the program. Okay, so you use the map ra okay. reference as a, as a, a like a... I mean, if, if you're using some, something like libbpf, you probably can, or like, I don't know, skeleton, right? You yeah. probably can just reference this map by name. Okay. I mean, so it, it, it has to like be... some special section for, for those uh, static keys? Yeah. Okay, so we go to a special section to define static yeah, key, and yeah. then... So every, every such call will add a piece of section corresponding to this debug key as okay. name. And then we create maps, and then we load. So it really sounds yeah. like dot static key dot debug key, and then for that we generate map like with it, maybe it was in some special section of the skeleton, and then we can have another wrapper or whatever to do switch for static keys where you pass this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. It was simpler in the in the first patch set, but then not too generic. I uh, just want to make one more comment uh, regarding the question that uh, Darug asked about <coughs> how this is different from just uh, hundreds of uh, if statements. So it's from the fire point of view, we still need to this what it says, like push stack as many times as there are switch statements, difference with separate branches, no. No. that this Right now, this 8,000 limit is pretty much nothing but heuristic. Uh, it's trying to say that, well, if, if verifier keeps going further and every time like it needs to explore one more branch, one more branch, and number of branches like keep increasing, it means that it's kind of reaching dead end. So like it will not make progress. In this case, it will see like here's a switch statement, and even if it has to explore like 8,000 branches at this time it knows that it's still making progress it's just that this mm -hmm. heuristic mm -hmm. will not be yeah. like triggered yeah and obviously like runtime you do not have like to to go through 8000 ifs so yeah sorry can you hear me okay thank you thank you very much